In this video, we will introduce assembly programming for the PIC 16 f 1719 microcontroller. To begin, there are 51 assembly instructions making the PIC 16 f 1719 and most all PICs reduced instruction set computers. So that means that there are not as many instructions to remember as some more sophisticated processors. This makes them ideally suited for students, hobbyists, and others who want to dabble with microcontrollers without having a significant learning curve. There are four types of commands available. They will be categorized into register-oriented, meaning that these commands influence an entire register, in this case of all 8 bits. This is an 8-bit architecture on this PIC, so all 8 bits will be involved. They can be bit-oriented, meaning that they only influence one bit amongst a register, so that could be either setting or clearing or testing that bit. They could be literal oriented, which is the nomenclature that is used for constants. So if you are putting a constant value into a register or you are putting a constant value into W, those are literal oriented commands. And then there are control oriented commands. These control oriented commands control things like the flow of a program, perhaps going to a specific location of a program, changing areas in memory uh, where you are going to be executing some uh, commands from, those types of things. They can also put the microcontroller to sleep and call subroutines. So let's go ahead and examine some of the commands. We will divide this video into several parts and so this first part will introduce some commands and so that way you can pause after we have some examples and see how these commands work. So the first command to introduce is CLRW. This clears the W register and so that is much like just pressing the C button on a calculator. If you think about the W register being an accumulator which is holding the current sum of values, things like that, CLRW is like pressing the C button to clear out um, values in the W register. You can also set an initial value other than zero in the W register using the MOVLW command. So this is a literal oriented command and a register oriented command because it puts a literal into a register and so this will move whatever constant value you specify into the W register. This is a very important command and used quite a lot because we cannot directly put a value into a register other than zero so we must first put it into W and then move it from W into the register of interest. MOVLW as well as any other literal oriented command can handle literal values specified in several different bases. In fact, it can handle hexadecimal values specified in three different ways. So hexadecimal values can be indicated by 0x and then the hexadecimal value. That will always uh, proceed hexadecimal in nomenclature. You can also have an h as a suffix to indicate that it's hex. And it's important to note if you use this nomenclature, you must put a 0 as a leading value if the first digit is anything other than a numeric. So if it's anything other than 0 through 9, if it happens to be A through F, then you will need that leading 0. You can also simply just put a number. So it's important to note, if you put 37, that 37 is interpreted as hexadecimal 37, not decimal 37. So that would be 3 times 16, 48, plus 7, 55 decimal would be 37 hex. If you actually wanted 37 decimal, you should put D and then single quotes uh, around the 37. And you can also put in binary values. So just put B and then put the binary value that you want um, inside of these single quotes. We can also, in addition to clearing W, we can clear any other special function register or any other register that you specify as a variable. And so CLRF and then the name of the register will zero out all of the bits in that particular register. So the example CLRF TRIS A would clear out all of the bits in TRIS A, which would then make all of the bits in port A outputs. It's important to note that if you're going to use commands like this with any register that is not one of our core registers, you must move into the bank in which those registers reside. And so in the example of TRIS A, TRIS A resides in bank 1, and so you would have to move into bank 1 um, using the bank selection register. 
BSF and BCF clear or set and clear register bits. So this is a bit oriented command and only changes one bit within the register. And the syntax there as you see BSF and then you name the register comma the bit number. So this is bit number zero within port A also known as RA0. Setting makes it a one, clearing makes it a zero. So if you executed BSF port A comma zero then RA0 would go to a one. If you instead said BCF port A comma zero then RA0 would go to a zero. So just like we can move a literal into W, you can also move a literal into two other special registers. So MLV, MOVLB moves a literal into the bank selection register, so that changes the bank for us. And MOVLP moves a literal into the PCLATH, that is part of the program counter. And so um, that should actually be the upper bits of the program counter, PCLATH. MOVF is a little bit of a misnomer. It's really a copy, and it can be done two different ways. MOVF and any name of a register, comma, zero, will copy the contents of that register into the W register. So the example here, MOVF port A, comma, zero, takes a copy of what's in port A and puts it into the W register. It does not clear out the contents of port A. Whatever was in port A before will remain in port A. This is simply a copy rather than a move. You can also move a value into itself. So if you do MOVF port A comma one, that takes a copy of what's in port A and puts it back into port A. That may seem like it's really nonsensical to do that. Why would you ever want to move something into itself? It doesn't change the value. What it does have opportunity to do is to change the status register. And so the Z bit in particular will be set to one if the value that is in there is zero. So in this case, if you make a copy of port A, putting it back into itself, if the value that's in port A is zero, then the Z bit in the status register would go to one. And so that's one way to check whether a value is zero or not. MOVWF is the way that we move a value from W into F into a special function register. And so typically if you want a constant value to move into a special function register, you must first move a literal into W, then take that literal value in W and move it on to the special function register, in the case of this example, into port B. Swap F swaps the nibbles in a register. So if you remember, a byte is 8 bits wide, a nibble is 4 bits wide, and so in each 8-bit register we have two nibbles, an upper nibble and a lower nibble and all swap F does is exchanges the upper nibble for the lower nibble keeping all those bytes in the same order but simply swapping the upper and the lower nibbles within that register. This can also put the destination into either the W register, so if you wanted to swap the bits but not actually change the register, just swap them around and put them into W, you can do that or you can swap the bits and store them back into the register itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at these commands and trace through what would happen after you execute the following five commands. You might want to pause this video for a moment, see if you can work it out. So what I would normally do is make a table and just put W at the top and then put port B at the top and then what we're going to do is trace through and say, okay, after each of these commands, what do we know is going to be in this register? What do we know is going to be in that register? I also like to put a question mark if we would just simply not know what would be in a register after each command. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this example on your own, and then when you're ready, go ahead and hit play. Okay, and we'll resume. And so let's take a look at what would happen. After CLRW, I will put these in binary here. The W register would be all zeros. This did not affect port B at all, so we don't know what would be in port B. If there was something previously that happened before this snippet of code, whatever was in there before would be unchanged. MOVLW 17, remember this is going to be interpreted as hexadecimal 17. It's going to put 17. So remember to go from hexadecimal to binary, that one gets split up into four bits representing one in binary, the seven, the four bits over here, so we've got 0001, 0111. 
Still haven't changed anything with port B. Now what we're going to do is move the contents of W into port B. That does not change W, so W stays the same. And now we have a copy of this over in port B. Then we're going to do a swap of port B comma zero. Now this comma zero says put the results of that swap into the W register. So we're going to take what's in port B, we're going to swap the upper and the lower nibble, and then we're going to put that down here. So now you see the upper nibble was a one right here. That's now the one here. The lower nibble was the seven. That's now the upper nibble. That affected the W register. The B register was unaffected at that point. Now if we do a swap port B comma one, that says swap the contents of port B and put it into port B itself. And so here you see that we have swapped the upper and lower nibble in port B and that did not change our W register. So we will stop this video here and then more commands will be introduced in the next video.